Tonight's headlines are brought to you in part by Coldwell Energy and McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Sally Lemus. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. The court sets bail at $25,000 for a male accused of assaulting a minor. Also tonight, recovery may be tough, but help is here. And America remembers a horrific day and respects are given. In sports, young athletes compete in a tough but fun race. Stay with us, we have these stories and more next here on the Channel 2 News. Need a new phone? Trade in now and get up to $500 off our best 5G devices. Trade in your older phone in any condition and step up to better savings and speeds only our 5G network can provide. Check out our website and catch up on the best mobile experience. Trade in now. Docomo Pacific, better together. We've made a lot of breakfasts and along the way we noticed something was missing. A warm cinnamon roll for breakfast or with breakfast. A fluffy blueberry muffin from the drive-thru you're already driving through. A glazed apple fritter which might find its way into your coffee. These are options every breakfast haver should have. And now, they do. Meet the new bakery sweets at McDonald's. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. day to the WAMI and good evening Commonwealth. Today is Wednesday, September 7, 2022. A male accused of sexual abuse of a minor is behind bars. Dino B. Tabian is facing one count of sexual abuse of a minor in the first degree. He is being held with bail set at $25,000. Judge Kenneth Govendo issued an arrest warrant for Tabian last week. According to DPS on August 29, a parent reported that her juvenile daughter was sexually assaulted by Tabian. Her daughter allegedly met Tabian through social media and agreed to meet up. DPS says Tabian admitted to sexually assaulting the minor. Tabian was arrested and transported to the Department of Corrections where he was booked and detained. Also in court, a repeat robbery offender is back behind bars with bail set at $50,000. 30-year-old Ronald Leon Guerrero Ely is charged with robbery after snatching a bag from Korean tourists up in Marpy. Ely appeared before Judge Wesley Bogdan last week, who set bail at $50,000. Ely was first arrested for robbery back in 2012 and charged for theft in 2020. Ely is remanded back to the Department of Corrections. The CNMI joins all other states and territories across the U.S. in recognizing September as Recovery Month. Recovery is for everyone, every person, every family, every community. That is the theme for this year's National Recovery Month as a way to remind those in recovery and their supporters that no one is alone in their journey. The governor's office was filled with many advocates, partners, and those looking for change. And as Governor Ralph Torres officially declares September as Recovery Month, he urges those in need to seek help from existing programs and friends. With so much programs now, it really is right for everyone. Uh, and I've said this in the past, we've seen so many good folks just fell into the wrong cracks. 
um, doesn't make you any less important than the other. We just need to, as a community, embrace those the programs uh, and coming back and helping others. No one knows more to help than those that have been there. June Santos is on his journey to recovery, and he shares his story, struggles, and later success. My addiction took over every aspect of my life, and I became somebody that even I myself could not recognize. All my priorities were distorted, and people that were important to me became an afterthought, including my mom, the woman that raised me and showed me true unconditional love. It's been about one year and 10 months since I made the decision to seek help. I went through treatment at CGC and even residential treatment at SAR. I learned so much from them and I'll forever be grateful. Staying clean and sober hasn't been easy and I'll admit I had a couple of relapses within my first year. But as I stand here in front of you all today, I can say that tomorrow, September 8th, I will celebrate 10 months of living clean and sober. I do my best to help people come into recovery and I am very active in a lot of recovery events. This journey to recovery has helped me realize my work. It has taken me in a different direction and given me hope and a sense of real purpose after living what I felt was a hopeless and purposeless life for many years. It's been 21 years since the attack on the World Trade Center in New York where thousands of lives were lost and several hundreds were badly injured. And even at this part of the world, we never forget and we remember our heroes. As 9-11 nears, heroes in this very community are remembered and honored at the Field of Flags at the American Memorial Park. Tan Holdings' Catherine Atow says they've had a field of heroes for seven years now, and the conception is a healing field, reminding heroes that the community is grateful. With the uh, impact of what 9-11 has had on the world, you know, we, we, we feel the hurt, right? We feel the trauma, we feel the difference of, the, of what the impact it made on, on how we travel. And so uh, we just wanted to really highlight our community heroes and just be able to say thank you. Each flag holds a name of a community hero who could be anyone from a frontliner who puts their lives at risk or first responders who helps in the island's recovery. We actually have 359 here on Saipan whose tags we have up. Um, however, uh, throughout the Marianas, uh, we also have the field on Tinian and Rota. Um, throughout the Marianas, we, we have um, less than 650 flags. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. All proceeds and donations will go to the Northern Marianas Humanities Council, who works towards addressing mental health. At the time, uh, there was a, a program with the Humanities Council that they were doing with a, a veteran uh, who came out and conducted like uh, some um, yoga meditation services and so forth. And he came out and did it a couple years ago as well. So with that program, they kind of expanded it. And so we felt like they're the perfect beneficiary to help us with, with our, our goals, our intentions. So um, I know uh, this event continues to evolve. And so we hope their program continues to evolve as well. For those who want to donate and be a part of this movement, Saipan residents can purchase t-shirts at the TSL building along Beach Road and Tinian and Rota residents can visit their mayor's office. The 9-11 proclamation signing ceremony will be held tomorrow at the Saipan International Airport at 10 a.m. and the 9-11 motorcade will be held on Saturday at 9 a.m. All right, coming up, bankers are greeted by a proa that reminds us of our roots. Find out what we mean after the break.
sea turtles and hawksbill turtles call the Mariana Islands home. They're an important part of the marine ecosystem. They are under threat and they are protected under CNMI law. Keep plastic out of the ocean. Keep vehicles off the beach. Use the sea turtle stranding hotline if you see poaching activities or if you see a turtle in trouble. Call 287-8537 and save a turtle. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. The island's local bank connects with an agency dedicated to keeping the culture alive. Annie Moody, a Chamorro canoe, has found a new temporary home at the Bank of Saipan. 500 Cells has partnered with the bank for a canoe display and canoe exhibit in hopes to attract bankers to their program. This is the beginning of a relationship that we are hoping to build up into possibly a canoe festival in the beginning of the year. Right, a canoe festival. Right now we have six canoes in our Gumas, five canoes in the Gumasakman. Annie Moodsy, who's out in the lobby right now, will be launched later this month, and then we will have six for the community that's ready to go, and we need sailors. Bank President John Arroyo says this partnership with 500 Cells was like a perfect match. So the thing that they're doing is revitalizing a part of our culture, you know, our history, that was so strong, you know, years and years ago that we have lost along the way. Getting that back is so important, you know, to us as as a as a as an as a group of people, to learn how to sail and navigate the waters where we were once so dominant in, and that fit, you know, with 500 sails, and the culture and Bank of Saipan was just such a match that I couldn't ignore. I mean, we're the CNMI's, you know, first. Um, local bank. We are the bank of the CNMI and what better way to you know make that impression than to be part of what Pete and Emma are trying to do. Pete Paris says their mission of 500 cells is to revive the canoe culture. This used to be a community that was a maritime community and there were canoes and we had canoe culture which is a way of in interacting where everyone helps each other and you get your transportation, you get your fish, and all this, it's all, it was a, such a nice time when, when this community was whole before the colonial period. And I think we're all really happy to have them back. And we're really happy to see what this does. When the kids get on the canoes, they're excited. When the adults get on the canoes, they're excited. It's really fun, and it's making Saipan um, a different place. When you look out and you see canoes on the water, you know, you just can't help but get the goosebumps. So. That's where we're going in. The 500 Cells continues to hold programs that teach youth and interested individuals about canoe culture and the water. Garapan has just added another go-to event to start the weekend. It's called Fiesta Fridays. If you're looking for a variety of food, games, kid activities, and a little shopping, Fiesta Fridays may be the place to go. Fiesta Fridays is a new event hosted by the NMI Museum in Garapan. Director Danny Aquino. Every Friday after September 9th, we will have an event here. Uh, we're going to be selling like food, the vendors who sell food, um, there'll be music and entertainment, there'll be bouncy houses for the kids. Uh, it's going to be like a family uh, fun night. Fridays at the museum will have Zumba, a bouncy house for kids, and other family activities. Aquino says the plan is to add more as weeks go by. Then as we move along, we'll increase like entertainment, like maybe a battle of the bands, you know, um, or lip sync contests. Many successful and large events have been held at the Garapan grounds in hopes to attract families to visit the museum. One of the biggest problems when I came on board was trying to increase the capacity or the traffic for local people to gain interest into the museum. And I found it very difficult. So the only thing that was possible was to create like activities, outdoor activities to support the museum. So if we're having our Fiesta Friday, the museum will be open in the evenings for people to view like what we have inside, the artifacts, 
and stuff like that. So far, there are 11 food vendors signed up and ready for Friday. Tents and a big stage is also being set up at the museum. The event will start at 5 p.m. until 9 p.m. All community members and tourists are welcome to join. All right, folks, don't go anywhere. We have sports up next. Need a new phone? Trade in now and get up to $500 off our best 5G devices. Trade in your older phone in any condition and step up to better savings and speeds only our 5G network can provide. Check out our website and catch up on the best mobile experience. Trade in now. Docomo Pacific, better together. All workers have the right to a safe workplace. Employers must provide a workplace that is free from recognized hazards and comply with applicable OSHA standards, including proper reporting of injuries. Training needs to be done in a language and vocabulary employees can understand. And an OSHA information poster must be displayed prominently in the workplace. Workers, you have the right to raise a safety or health concern with your employer or OSHA without being retaliated against. And request an OSHA consultation of your workplace if you believe there are unsafe or unhealthy conditions. OSHA can help. Free assistance to identify and correct hazards is available to small and medium-sized employers without citation or penalty. So look out, speak up, and stay safe. Job safety and health, it's not only good practice, it's the law. Check out OSHA.gov or call 664-3154 or 3155. Tonight's sports brought to you in part by Tan Holdings through the Tan Su Lin Foundation, making communities a better place to live. Buenas sports fans. Young athletes join the Tan Holdings 50th Anniversary Taga Kids Triathlon. Kids were up and early on Saturday for the Taga Kids Triathlon at Palpo Beach. Over 30 kids ages 5 to 12 competed for medals, while parents were cheering them on and pushing them to their fullest. Three, two, one! Oh. race distances were set up. The short course for 5 to 8 years old consisted of a 50 meter swim, one loop bike race and a one loop run. The long course for the older kids 9 to 12 years old is a 100 meter swim, two loop bike race and a two loop run. In the 5 to 6 year old category female division, Olivia Walsh crossed the finish line first, Chloe Burrow second place and Mika McKagan for the third place. <laughs> Meanwhile, Juwan Park tops the male division, followed by Jace Brentfleck for second place, and third place is Declan Speed. <laughs> 
In the 7- to 8-year-old category, Lowell Spaith finished the race first. Eileen came second place and third place is Raya Edwilson. Gabriel Walsh tops the male division. Next is Yubo Lin, second place and third place is Viu Borg. And for the long course 9 to 10 year old categories, Scarlett Burrow topped the female division. Leilani Rosella finished second and is Grand for the third place. <laughs> Meanwhile, Quido Jambor ruled the male division. Kanoa Owens second place and third place is Phillips James Simmons. And for the 11 to 12 year old category, there's only one competitor in the female division. The winner is no other than Olivia Zhang. In the male division, Akeem Edwilson completed the race first. Second place is Keone Rosella and James Zhang for the third place. Here are some highlights of this very fun and cute event. And how do, how do you feel about today's competition? Good. I feel nervous. I feel nervous. You feel nervous? But um, is swimming one of your favorite sports? Yeah. Tell me what you love about it. I uh, love well, because I get to swim and I breathe in the water. And what did you do to prepare for uh, this morning's competition? Um, so I... I, 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 have, I have to wake up pretty early because my mom is doing the saga. Then so um, I didn't have time to, to, to prepare, but to, for here, it's just wide open. You don't have to like, worry about crowding. Well, like a week or two ago, um, we started doing swim class, and uh, my mom was always making us run a mile. It was pretty hot. Um, it, and also swim class on Saturday. Sometimes at the end of swim class, we did Marco Polo. Kids and their parents are so grateful to Tan Holdings for hosting the Tag Kids 2022.
Hey golfers, come north and practice your game at the Marianas Driving Range. New Year's local specials. 10-piece coupon books available for just $60. That's a $10 savings. Want to get really good? Come work on your swing every day for just $99 per month. It's our practice pass and you're going to love it. Grab your passes and go straight to the range. You can social distance and chip all at the same time and the views are free. Reserve now at MarianasTrekking.com. You can pay online. Open seven days a week. And for the case pin weather report, mostly sunny with isolated showers, south southeast wind 10 to 13 miles per hour. Tonight, partly cloudy with isolated showers, southeast wind 6 to 10 miles per hour, high 88, low 76, the humidity 75%. Tomorrow, mostly sunny with isolated showers, southeast wind 7 to 11 miles per hour, high 88, low 75. The marine forecast combined seas of 4 to 5 feet will diminish to between 3 and 4 feet by Friday. South winds 5 to 10 knots, wind waves 2 feet or less, northwest swell 4 to 5 feet. The northwest swell generated by distant typhoon Hinan Moor is expected to diminish by Thursday. The sunrise will be at 6.05 a.m., high tide 6.26 p.m., low tide 11.39 p.m., and the sunset, you can catch that at 6.25 p.m. Well, there you have it. That is your midweek edition of the new sports and weather here in the Marianas. We thank you so much for watching the Channel 2 News. We hope you have a great night and we'll see you back here on Friday.